Hello and welcome to the solution video to spicy question number 49. So in this question we're told that OABC is a parallelogram. This means the vector from A to B, which we can see as 3B along the top, must be the same as the vector along the bottom from O to C. So O to C is also 3B. We are also told that M is the midpoint of AC. And since M is the midpoint, the vector from M to A must be the same as the vector from C to M. So vector CM is also 2A. Next we'll look at the vector from C to B. To get from C to B you could go from C to A, and then from A to B. So CA plus AB. Now we know both of these vectors from C to A must be 4A, and from A to B must be 3B. So the sum of those is 4A plus 3B. And once again since this is a parallelogram the vector CB must be the same as the vector OA. So we can pop OA on the other side, that's also 4A plus 3B. Next we're given some ratio information, specifically about the points x and y. We're going to use this information to find the vector from x to y. To get from x to y, first of all we'll do the vector xc, and then the vector cy. Now the first ratio is 3 to 1. This means that the point x must be 3 quarters of the way along the line from o to c. So the vector from xc must be 1 quarter of the vector from o to c. So let's replace xc with 1 quarter of oc. Then if we look at the next ratio, it's 2 to 3. This tells you the point y is 2 fifths of the way along the line CB. So we could replace the vector CY with 2 fifths of CB. Now fortunately we know both OC and CB. So 1 quarter of OC is actually 1 quarter of 3B. And 2 fifths of CB is 2 fifths of 4A plus 3B. Now if we expand these brackets, we do 3 times 1 quarter, so that's 3 quarters B. 2 fifths times 4a is 8 fifths a, and 2 fifths times 3b is 6 fifths b. There are two terms here involving b, so if we simplify those we end up with 39 over 20b. So we've managed to find the vector xy. Next in the question we're told that p, q and r are all on the same straight line, and also that p, q is parallel to xy. Now if p, q and r are all on the same straight line, and p, q is parallel to xy, then the vector p, r must also be parallel to xy. This means we can write down the vector from p to r as some multiple of the vector xy. Let's call that multiple alpha, so alpha xy. Now we know the vector for xy, so we've got alpha lots of 39 over 20 b plus 8 fifths a. If we expand the alpha through, we get 39 over 20 alpha lots of b plus 8 fifths alpha lots of a. So this is one way of writing the vector from p to r. Now we will consider another way of going from p to r. So this time, going from p to a, and then from a to r. So pa plus ar. Now the vector pa must be parallel to the vector oa, since they're on the same line. We know the vector from o to a, so we could replace pa with some multiple, this time we'll call it beta, of oa. Now for the vector ar we need the ratio that we're given in the question. The ratio of ar to rm is 3 to 7. So to get from a to r is going 3 tenths of the way along the line am. But we're also going in the opposite direction of the vector, so we need to minus 3 tenths of the vector ma. Now we know those vectors so we can write those in. oa was 4a plus 3b, and ma is 2a. Now if we expand the brackets we get 4b to lots of a, plus 3b to lots of b, and then minus 6 tenths, which will simplify to 3 fifths, of a. Two of these involve a, so we can simplify those. We end up with 4b to minus 3 fifths lots of a, plus 3b to lots of b. So this is a second way of writing the vector pr. We've got this first way in blue, and this second way in green. Now since they represent the same vector, they must both be equal. So let's look at them more closely. The coefficients must match, so if we look at the coefficient of b in both of them, we have 39 over 20 alpha, and then 3 beta. So 39 over 20 alpha must equal 3 beta. If we do the same with the a's, then 8 fifths alpha must be the same as 4 beta minus 3 fifths. So 8 fifths alpha equals 4 beta minus 3 fifths. This is just some simultaneous equations we need to solve. I'm going to multiply the first one by 20, so I get 39 alpha equals 60 beta. For the second one I'm going to multiply by 15, this will give you 24 alpha, equals 60 beta, minus 9. Notice how I've managed to get a 60 beta in both of the equations. This will allow me to substitute out the 60 beta in the second one for 39 alpha, like this. Now we just add 9 to both sides, and we get this, and subtract 24 alpha from both sides, and you'll get 9, 
equals 15 alpha, and then divide both sides by 15, you'll get alpha equals 9 over 15, which will simplify to give you 3 fifths. Now we also need to get beta, so let's return to the first of those equations. Replace the alpha with 3 fifths, we get 39 times 3 fifths equals 60 beta. The left hand side, if you multiply, gives you 117 over 5, and then divide both sides by 60, will give you 117 over 300, which also simplifies, that goes down to 39 over 100. So we found the values of alpha and beta. Beta in particular will help us answer the question. So in a previous step when we initially defined beta, we said that PA was equal to beta lots of OA. Now that we know what beta is, PA must equal 39 over 100 of OA. This means the line from P to A must represent 39 hundredths, or perhaps 39% of the line from O to A. This will then mean that the remaining part from O to P must be 61%, or 61 over 100, lots of OA. So we could write OP is 61 over 100 lots of OA. Now we can use this information to answer the question. The question wanted us to find the ratio of OP to PA. And if we look at these second two vectors here, we can see that the ratio must be 61 to 39. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.